over to somebody right now if you could tell them the very day that you were baptized in Jesus name what year it is when you received the Holy Ghost what day and what year it was come on could you tell somebody and then just say I'm still amazed at what God does hallelujah May 8th of 1977 baptized in Jesus name June 5th of 1977 received the Holy Ghost that he's just given away come on somebody aren't you glad hallelujah God, hallelujah, amen. Help us sing just one more song. I don't, we don't want a song festive this morning, but I wonder if you could stand one more time. Could you move around just a tad and shake five, six, seven and a half hands? Tell somebody he knows how to take good care of me. Yeah, he knows how, he knows how to take good care of me. Walking with Jesus is where I'll be Before I know the problem I don't mind a letter knows the need He knows how, he knows how To take good care of me Day to day it will find it Everything that I need Now I don't need to be worried knows the need. Amen. It wasn't a Daniel in the den of lions. It was a lion in the den of Daniels. Because there was enough faith, amen, to take him out. Amen. Right out of that pit. He knows how. You might as well dance in advance. Because God's got this. Hallelujah. Somebody do a little hallelujah right now. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody dance in advance. God's got this right now. Somebody say, yeah. oh. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. We want to go to the word of the Lord. My, I feel Holy Ghost in the house. And we're not taking turns up here. So you might as well feel it out there like we feel it up here. <laughs> Amen. Somebody ought to smile till your teeth are dry. Amen. You got something to be excited about. Amen. There's Holy Ghost happening in the house. And where Jesus is, anything can happen. Looking forward, amen, to the remainder of this service and services to come. Wednesday service, Sunday service. How many plan on not coming Wednesday? Wonderful. They're all going to be here, brother, just like you wanted. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, 
Praise the Lord. Looking forward to that. Also, the marriage seminar. We are just excited about that as well. Uh, amen. We're just going to have a great, fun time. Uh, we're not Holy Joe from Kokomo. Sister Nolik and I have not arrived. Amen. But after about almost 32 years, amen, there's a few things we just want to share with you, maybe to help you along the way. How many of you know it's a journey? And Jesus intended it to be a journey. And it's a wonderful journey. Amen. We just want to take amen, the debris that happens to be on the pathway sometimes, take it out of the way so we can, amen, enjoy that journey. Is that all right? Praise God. Hallelujah. You're turning with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 21. Isaiah, chapter number 21. So good again. Thank you, musicians, for your assistance today. Looking forward to more CDs in the vestibule. Anybody interested? It may be saturated here. Uh, amen. We uh, are trying to get uh, some other brand new material um, uh, aligned. Amen. Hopefully, brother, this year. We're going to put something out new. Amen. Fix and make some phone calls. Uh, some of the materials are ready to launch. And so uh, we're looking forward to that. Praise God. Uh, amen. Also looking forward to Israel. We'll be speaking a little bit more on that after a while. Uh, wow. We are just excited. Uh, and um, and uh, we, we just, wow, just not, not next year in Jerusalem, this year in Jerusalem. Praise God. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Appreciate the attentiveness. And it's great to be in a word of loving church. Amen. I love the Lord and what we feel here. Isaiah chapter number 21 and verse number 5. I'm going to read down just a little bit. Uh, amen. And uh, probably about verse number 12. Amen. 5. Starting with 5. Prepare the table. Watch in the watchtower. Eat. Drink. Arise, ye princes. And anoint the shield. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go, set a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. And he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a chariot of donkeys and a chariot of camels. And he hearkened diligently with much heed. Somebody say, much heed. Somebody say, and he cried. A lion, my Lord, I stand continually. Somebody say, every day. Upon the watchtower in the daytime. Am I set in my ward whole nights? Somebody say, all night long. Hallelujah. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of her gods with a small g. He hath broken unto the ground, on my threshing, or the corn of my floor. Look out, financial institutions of yesterday, that which I've heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Yahweh Sobaot, God of the angel armies, have I declared unto you the burden of Duma. He hath called to me out of Seir, watchman, what of the night? If there's a duplicity in the scripture such as this, there is a great emphasis in Hebrew fiber. Again, he says, watchman, what of the night? But the watchman said, the morning cometh and also the night. If you will inquire, inquire ye, return, come. If I could preach it, brother, as many preachers put a title to the message, I'd like to just put a title to this one. The fourth, the fourth principle. Amen. Somebody, somebody just kind of do this right now. The fourth principle. Show somebody next to you. The fourth principle. Matter of fact, when you leave this place, don't say praise the Lord. Just go like this. Amen. The fourth principle is what we need. I know it sounds strange, but again, like puzzle pieces together a little later, I pray it makes some kind of a picture for you to take home and to chew on for just a little while. Could you take that Bible, harness it to your heart and today, and could we begin to pray together right now? Father, we thank you. We need your anointing. God, these lips of clay are inadequate without you. Help us today. Melt us, mold us, make us what we ought to be. God, we chase after you. Amen. Put the fire and the desire in every heart here that's gathered. Conviction, let it fall. Amen. Your love, let it be felt amongst the constituency. We thank you, Lord. Bless this church. Bless this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody said, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor right now. Tell him I'm not going to sit down on that preacher right now. Could you do it? Hallelujah. Could you place your Bibles on the pew next to you? Clap your hands fervently one more time under the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Woo, somebody love him a little while. I feel Holy Ghost in the house. Come on, entertain his presence. Let him touch your soul. Amen. God, I, I don't hold any barrier between me and you. I need you today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing so long in the house of the Lord. Could you, amen, as I often do, amen, just clap your hands in the pew just to make somebody know next to you that you mean business right where you are. <laughs> hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. If you can't worship back there, please move to the front right now. If you can't worship in the front, please move to the back right now. But somebody find some place you can magnify the Lord with me and exalt his name together. Brother, we got one shot at this day, one service. Amen. And I'm not playing God games, and I know you know this isn't a bless me club. We've come with intentionality. We've come with intent. Amen. I've come to praise him. I've come to cast out devils. Come on, I come to speak in a new tongue. I come to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Woo! Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, is there any Pentecostal in the house that believes that these signs shall follow them? Praise God. Woo! Amen. Brother, the preacher's in the house. We might have to tag team because I'm fixing to take a lap just like you did. Praise God. I want to, if I could, dive in to this scroll of Isaiah. I often say it to churches and let me say it just to this assembly as well, that the scroll of Isaiah, in a scroll it was, before it become bound, uh, even in the codex fashion that you're holding today, brother, they discovered some time back in the Dead Sea Scroll uh, display of all of the books that were uh, acquired. A little Bedouin boy in 47, 1947, threw a stone in some cave because he thought his goat went on the inside and to scare it out, the stone hit clay jars instead. And with that cracking sound, he recognized that stone didn't hit some kind of stone wall or a mountainside. So he treacherously, dangerously climbed up that large cliff, somehow finding handholds and footholds. And on the inside, discovered that they were old paper, parchment, animal skin kind of scrolls. I won't go into it with a lot of detail. It ended up on the black market selling it for such low prices. It's out. It, it would blow your mind. With antiquity scrolls 2,000 years old plus, even before the time of Messiah, it was something, amen, to ponder what was in their hands. And then the Jewish antiquities got a hold of the idea. And of course they were paying as if it were millions to get the remnants that were already in the hands of certain individuals found even on the shores of America. And one of those scrolls was the book of Isaiah. Out of all of those that were written and that were there, the book of Isaiah was the one that was the most or complete and intact. Of all of its 66 chapters, brother, it's amazing, amen, except for a few punctuations, except for a few uh, things that were indifferent to its interpretation or translation. It blew the mind of the scholars that day. As a matter of fact, brother, I would look at what you're holding today is the 1611 edition, amen, King James that wrote into the English form from the Greek and the Hebrew that we're holding today. So a lot of men will say that it's man's hands that have interrupted the flow from centuries gone by that make the word of God invalid. It's just something that has been changed over the times of history, amen. And so this discovery of the dead Sea Scrolls proves without a doubt, amen, the flow and the consistency of that man's hands had nothing to do with it by way of adverse action. But the word of God is still true today as it was 2,000 years ago and beyond. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, come on, you can bank it. You can, come on, you can stand on this. Amen. All scripture is still given by the inspiration of God. Oh, somebody say yes. 
And of all of its writings, brother, you will have Isaiah 9 and amen, on and on. For us, un, unto us, a, a, a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. You could go to Isaiah 53 that the sages call the holiest of holies. Amen. Within, amen, the Isaiah scroll. But I want to lead you. Could I say, take your hand of imagination, walk down the avenue of inspiration. And could I lead you to this chapter, probably a third of the way through of the dusty scroll, and unroll it today to begin to talk to you of some of you have already guessed it. Amen. By the, com the, the compilation of repetition, the words, watchmen, watchmen, watchmen. Somebody say watchmen. Brother, what I feel today is that somebody, in a nutshell, needs to leave this house this afternoon after this service with the spirit of a watchman. Brother, I look at the angst as it were. Brother, the Bible says in verse 4, which we didn't read in the terse verse or text before, it says, my heart panteth fearlessness, amen, affrighted me the night of my pleasure hath he turned into fear unto me. The prophet, brother, though he may be by his nice fire in the desert place, contemplating and thinking, amen, passionately, the silla of a beautiful evening as the canvas of stars, amen, is above him. He cannot rest for the fact of what he's writing right now. He says, my pleasure had turned into fear because Isaiah begins to write, prepare the table. Watch in the watchtower. Get some strength. Eat, drink, arise, anoint the shield to show you the earnestness, amen, of what's going on, brother, the shield back then, amen, though there have been not very many uh, blacksmiths in the land of Israel, amen, the shield back then was two pieces of wood that were gl glued together like a gorilla glue, if you please, and a band of metal was placed around them, brother, in order for that shield to withstand the battle and age, they would anoint it with oil on the surface of the wood so that when the arrow of the enemy came it wouldn't crack the wood amen and diffuse the shield as a matter of fact that's what I believe Paul had mentioned amen in the scripture hallelujah he said look out for the fiery darts of the enemy they would dip them in bithium and a barrage and an entourage of arrows and missiles they would call would come toward the enemy and those shields would catch them but if your shield was soaking wet with with some wonderful anointed oil, it would quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Brother, I'm here to tell you, in the post of a watchman, you couldn't play games. Somebody had to leave that post with their faith anointed with the holy oil so that any arrow that comes from the enemy, hello somebody, could be quenched in midair. Is there anybody here that wants to prepare? Is there anybody here that wants the spirit of a watchman in this hour? What Watchmen, watchmen, what of the night? Oh. <laughs> Brother, it didn't stop there. The scripture, amen, is repetitive in the sense it says, and he cried. Amen. The scripture says with all these adjectives, amen, and he with much heed. He said, behold, that's in an alarming exclamation kind of jargon in those days. Behold. He even talked about the threshing floor, which was their bank back then. He simply says, put finance into it. It. I heard the Lord of hosts. Come on, he calleth me. There's camels. Amen. There's donkeys. Brother, the watchman, amen, had an urgency that day. Something is coming. Look at your neighbor. Say, something is coming. Yeah. <laughs> Brother, I, I, I'm not going to go to all the scriptures. And, amen. If you found it on the screen, that's wonderful. Then I, I remember the scripture when there was a man coming with a chariot. A chariot down the road. 
amen, riding furiously. And they called, brother, for the watchman to come and to peer, read the scripture. And he said, ah, I know who it is. It's Jehu riding furiously. Who could, brother, but in the distance tell who's coming down that trail? But a watchman that had keen insight with a laser focus out of the thousands of chariots in the land of Israel that could say, I know the man that rides that one. Brother, there's another instance. Amen. It's after Absalom, amen, was rebellious to his father David. Amen. And Absalom bumped in, amen, courageously against Joab, who was a man of war. And it's David that waited patiently at the palace to see, amen, the tidings of his son. Amen. He says, Watchman, come on, look, look, what do you see? He says, oh yeah, I see somebody coming. It's Ahimahaz, the son of Zadok. He's got a message. The Bible says he could tell by the way his legs were moving and running. Who but, brother? A watchman that could see in the distance to see who was coming by monitoring the speed and calculation of his stride. Come on, is somebody hearing me today? Amen. Somebody needs to get a hold of the spirit of the watchman and say, I've got to be preemptive. I can't wait for it to come to the city. I've got to make sure, amen, that I call it out in the midst of the night. Could you clap your hands under the Lord? Shakata Rabasha, watchman. Watchmen, what of the night? Whoa, brother, I don't, I don't want to bore you out of your gourd, and I don't want to make your brain drain to your socks. Oh, anybody with me in section D over here? Well, hallelujah. Anybody over here? Praise God. What you preaching, preacher? Woo. Praise God. There's a little hallelujah on this side. <laughs> Look at your neighbor say he's going to explain something. Look at your neighbor say stick with them now. Oh, brother, I have received a particular book. And I don't want to bookify you today. It's easy with preachers to bookify, especially if they love their library. I'd love to sit down here, amen, on the rabbi's steps and talk with you for an hour just in a few verses. But to hasten, <laughs> well, I'm having a good time whether you are or not. Hallelujah. Amen. But to hasten what I'm trying to say is the book that I received is a book that came straight from the Mossad. Amen. The, could I say, detective sequence system behind the Israeli forces. And I know you thought, I knew that was coming. Amen. <laughs> amen. And the IDF, amen, the Israeli Defense Force, it's a book that says rise and kill first. Whew. Rise and kill first. Brother, it's in the gist of the terrorism that happens in the periphery, amen, around the nation of Israel and the, those that would try to pressurize their way in to infiltrate. This book says, and they actually, with connotation and with solidity, brother, they say we've gotten a lot of this or some of this from the Talmud. They even spiritualize it, brother, wherein the commentator of the Torah says you have the right to rise and kill before it comes to you. In essence, brother, what they were saying, amen, when it comes to those that want to come to your borders, when it comes to those that want to come to your walls of your city, amen, in the gates that are so vulnerable, you have the right to rise and get it before it comes. Brother, in other words, they're simply saying you must in this day and hour be preemptive in your strike and in your stride. Asha kabasha. Somebody's got to get a hold of the spirit of a watchman that says I ain't going to let it come. My conviction doesn't start here. My conviction starts out there. My boundary doesn't start here. My walls of defense start as far as I can see. In the middle of the night, I'm going to put up a fight and I'm going to rise and kill it first before it gets me and my family. Shadarabasha. 
I'm not talking about insurrection. I'm not talking somebody ought to just wield some kind of weapon right now in the natural, but in the spiritual realm, there's got to be this tenacity on the insides. Amen. That says pride, you're out the door. Inconsistency, you're no longer my friend. Fear, I will no longer be engaged to your company. Amen. But I'm loosing myself to the understanding and the idea that lest I get this kind of disposition, I'll be lost in the quagmire of it all. Somebody get the spirit of a watchman today. Brother, if I'm not mistaken, it was Solomon that held that child, handed it to the soldier, said, go ahead, amen, use the divisionary sword upon it. All of a sudden, brother, the story stops in mid air, amen, as the lady, amen, the real mama cries out and says, no, amen, let it, amen, be alive. Woo! The real mama, amen, was displayed in the scene, but it took a wise man. It took a watchman. It took somebody that could see afar, amen, to make a call that day. It's from the tribe of Issachar, amen, that I've got to be a part of with the Bible amongst all the tribes, amen. Their tribe, brother, was called uh, those that had understanding of the times. Amen. Somehow, saints, I can't just be a fly on a piece of wallpaper. Amen. I can't sit back and let somebody else do it for me. I can't hang on the coattail of my pastor's prayers. But somehow, I've got to have the spirit of Issachar that says, God, give me laser focus. A watchman in the middle of the night. I've got to have understanding of the times I live in. Whoa, somebody say yes. <laughs> I've got to be that Daniel. Who climbs his personal watchtower. <laughs> Hallelujah. And who says it doesn't matter the opinion of my fellow magistrates and even of the prince or the king. But I've got the king of the universe to please. And it was him who Gabriel appeared and gave messages. Things that have been fulfilled. Things that were fulfilled in Daniel's time. And things in chapter 9 of Daniel and beyond that have not yet been fulfilled. But in a few short weeks, months, and maybe years are going to unfold. It's Daniel that said, God give me. Amen. The vision, the understanding, and the sight in the night. Who knows that but God would send an angel to you. <gasps> Who want to anoint your shield and prepare yourself. Amen. And say, God, I've got to rise and kill first. This isn't time for sideline show. This isn't time for just on and on rapidity of political. Amen. Pristine Pentecostal services that only go through the motions. Amen. A paradise of motions but lacking the power. God help us, but I can't afford to sit still when the choir's singing the song of the upper room. I can't afford to sit still when the pastor's preaching a message, amen, that I need on my journey. Hello, somebody, engage yourself in the church of the living God. Somebody shout, Watchmen. Amen. Brother, can I go on today? My, I feel Holy Ghost here. I feel anointing here. And anybody with me over here? Hallelujah. Could you give me a denominal nod? I need something. Come on. Whoa. Let's, let's look at this. Look, look at your neighbor and say, help him. Look at this. Help him. Watch this. There are four. There were four principles within this book. That, brother, this is awesome. And I begin to look at them, brother. <laughs> You'll have to pardon me, brother. I'm getting a little beside myself. I, I might spray it instead of say it. Praise God. I'll just hand you my hanky and we'll preach on. <laughs> uh, amen. But the first principle, and I, I, I could spend a lot of time, but the first principle was this. Amen. Is they understood that there will always be a Gentile nation that wants to kill us. Pol Pot, Russian pogroms. Germany, Hitler, Holocaust intention. Mussolini, Italy, on and on. The Arab Spring, the things that are happening now, Intifada. You could go on and on. 
they recognize, brother, one thing in this book that we've got to rise and kill first is the fact that there will always be a Gentile nation that wants to kill us. And I flip this around to say, church, there will always be a devil. There will always be an enemy. Don't underestimate the power of the devil that wants to deceive you, confuse you, lethargize you, and make you a, a, a Pentecostal pew potato. There will always be a devil that wants to unplug you from the power. You must realize that in the first principle. In your antics of how to be a watchman, you have got to realize there's always a devil rolling around seeking whom he may devour. He has come to kill, to steal, and destroy. Woo. Look at your neighbor and say, I know that's for sure. I've got to have my mind made up, brother. I've got to understand this. There's always a devil that wants to divide my marriage. There's always a devil that wants to kill my children. There's always a devil that wants to defuse my church. There's always a devil that wants to come against the authority. Amen. I'm a man of God. Hello, somebody. But I intend to walk up a, woo, a watchtower. <laughs> Hallelujah. I gotta hasten. I gotta hasten, brother. The, the second principle, as they realized in the book, and again, I don't want to bookify you, but they realized within the book, amen, is that there will always be those who seem friendly in the good times that will not assist us in the bad times. Brother, my mind goes to the 73 Yom Kippur War of Israel. Amen. They're in the balances. They were almost losing that war. Read it up, it's interesting. Amen. They declared war on one of their holy days. Amen, when they were not quite as ready and prepared as they should have been. Amen, nations withheld, even the United States withheld the goods. And thank God, God moved upon our presidency back then in 73. Amen, to literally deliver to them tanks and pallets of sustenance and on and on of warfare. And it helped to tip the scale. Amen, so Israel could fight its way through to victory. Thank God for Yahweh Sobaot, God of the angel armies that was behind them. What are you saying, preacher? Amen. Flesh may fail you. And there will always be those. Thank God for good camaraderie. Thank God for family and friends and church structure. It's biblical. The ecclesia, the assembly. If you think you can get it from a computer preacher, you're mighty wrong. For nobody can put their hand through one of those screens. Plasma or not. Amen. And lay hands on you and pray for you. You need the house of God. I don't care if it's in a, 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 a house. I don't care if it's some, amen, big sanctuary. You need the people of God. You need the strength of the assembly. You need the fivefold ministry. You need prophets and preachers and evangelists. Somebody say, yes. yes. I'm tired of the spirit. Amen. That denies the scripture in Hebrews that says, as you see the day approaching, let us assemble more. They'll always have an answer. They'll always have an answer. No, that means this or that. No. Uh, no. Amen. Read it through the book of Acts. They assembled, may have been houses sometimes, but not always. They said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. Where were they going? On their way to a temple. It wasn't just a regular house. They still went to the temple and prayed. It's biblical to go into a big place as well. Is this all right? <laughs> Thank you, preacher. Anybody else with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Flesh may fail, brother. My family may even fail. My wife may not be up to par sometimes. I may not be up to par for her sometimes. My closest camaraderies may discourage me sometimes. But I'm going to say I will trust in the Lord because he will never fail. Hallelujah. I will always realize, amen, that those closest to me may not always come through. But I don't have to be discouraged because Jesus is on my side. Can I get to the third? The third thing is, brother, and I've already touched on that. They've recognized that we need a safe haven. That's why they fought the War of Independence of 48. We need a safe haven from the dysphoria and the scatteredness. We need somewhere, amen, we can land and produce, amen, and multiply and facilitate, amen, our very being on the grounds of what we call home. <laughs> We need the church of the living God. But the fourth principle. Amen. How many, how many want the fourth principle? We've already preached it. 
If you're waiting for the good part, <laughs> it's happening right now. The fourth principle is simply this, brother. As a matter of fact, none of the first three will even matter in a while. Brother, the, we, we might as well understand that the first three are not going to matter if you don't get the fourth one. They recognized in this book, if you're going to rise and kill first, the fourth principle is this, brother, that we need a guard on the wall. It doesn't matter if you've got knowledge there's an enemy. It doesn't matter if somebody, your neighbor is going to fail you. It doesn't matter even if you have a homeland to secure yourself. None of that will eventually matter if you don't put a guard on the wall to preempt the strike that's coming. Come on, anybody ready to fight the good fight of faith? Come on, this is prime time. Sunday afternoon live. Holy Ghost in this house. Son, you're going to have to fight like you've never fought. You're going to have to fight, brother. Preempt. Preempt it, sir. Preempt it. It's a lot of charismatic spirits. Brother, I've traveled from the hotel to here. Probably 20 churches, 15. You'll find a scoop of them. I'm not knocking them down. But there's a lot of people, amen, that say you won't need holiness. That say baptism in Jesus' name is not essential. That receiving the Holy Ghost is some sidekick, side spare tire that you can acquire anytime you want to. Amen. Brother, I don't find that in the scripture. Acts 2.38, John 3.5, in the essentiality. Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other. Somebody's got to fight. You're going to have to rise up and kill that spirit that tries to persuade you differently. You're going to have to rise up and say, no. Amen. I bought the truth and I'm not going to sell it. You're going to have to rise up and say, this is that that the prophet Joel spoke of. That on the last days I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. Come on, is there a Pentecostal in the house? Is somebody with me in the back? Is somebody with me on this side? Hello, hallelujah. Get the fourth principle. Somebody's got to get that inertia on the inside. I'm going to preempt it. Woo. Could you clap your hands under the Lord? Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Somebody say yes, 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 yes. I gotta rise and kill first. Did you know? Did you know? And I, I don't, some of you know a whole lot more about this than I do. And I'm not a big tech man. Thank the Lord for my daughters and my son. Amen. Who helped me with that from time to time. I'll send them a t what do you do here? <laughs> How do you get Spotify on spot on? How do, well, <laughs> How do you do this and that? <laughs> I know it's the, it's the youth that are chuckling. Because <laughs> you know, because your parents do to it to you too. <laughs> what, what are you saying? Did you know that a lot but of the search engines, Google, Yahoo, whatever you want to call it, I mean, a lot of them are not a 360 reality in their search. Whoever's at the helm or the command can control what window you have. I mean, to look for your search. And they can point you into a specific direction. Hallelujah. And bring you to the place where they want you to go. Other than the other maybe conservative realm out here. Just because you get on Google doesn't mean you get a hold of God. It's not a 360 reality. Check this out, saints. Things happen incrementally that blow my mind. Brother, you, you, <laughs> I, I think, it, let, let me get this right. I think it was 1998, 1998, and you, you may have seen this. You never get into a car with somebody alone. Any, anybody ever tell your children that? I did mine for, never do that. If, if there's a stranger, stranger alert, scream, shout, jump, have a Holy Ghost feeling in Walmart. But you never, amen, never get into a car with a stranger alone. Ten years later, 2008, amen, you never get online with anybody, for anybody, alone. I'm going to told your kids that. If not, you ought to. You never do it alone. 
2018, 19, 10 years later, we Uber pay for to look online alone to get into a car alone with a stranger. Hello. Doesn't make any sense. But we've come to this place. Church, could, could, I, could I just pause to say this? This is the most opportune time to do what we can do for the joy on the journey for the kingdom of God. The most opportune time. Oh yeah, get a job, get an education, get married. Thank God for children. Thank God for the church structure. Thank the Lord for everything. There's blessings. Life is awesome. <laughs> Woo! Amen. But work like you've never worked for the kingdom of God. Sacrifice. Let God use you. Brother, I, 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 I want to read this. And I, I again, I hope I don't bore anybody with it. Amen. But I, 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 I want to <clears throat> just, and I, I, I hate, brother, sometimes using Amen. Periodicals to read. I'd just rather stay down there and climb the wall and bite the ceiling with you. Right. Amen. But before the days of satellite guidance system, navigation on the open sea took a great deal of skill and understanding. Amen. Yeah. In order to point the ship in the desired heading over 100 years ago, the navigator had to know more than where he desired to go. He had to know the ship's present location. Where are we right now? Since no landmarks are visible on the open sea, stable points of reference had to be discovered before the navigator could accurately triangulate the ship's position. But as a matter of fact, and, and you've been on cruises with us, as a matter of fact, hey man, and you're going again, and some of you are going again. Hey man, I, I remember the one time, I can't remember when it was, what cruise it was exactly. Maybe it was the last one we were on. Hey man, and uh, uh, we, we came off of this island and whatever and whatnot. We usually shop just a little bit. I'm not into the, uh, hey amen, uh, you know, trapeze with chimpanzees and. And we came off of this island and we walked into the lower deck and, amen, one of our children walked up and started talking to security. I know they bumped into them. <laughs> and, and, and come to find out as we caught up, amen, to them, that uh, uh, they were the top security of the ship, Royal Caribbean. Top security of the whole boat. Wow. How do you do this, sir? And come to find out, brother, his name tag kind of gave him away, uh, amen, etc. He's an Israeli from Israel. I know, you, I know. <laughs> Amen. Right from the bottom of Israel, Iliad, right by the Red Sea. Somebody say, Moses. <laughs> and so, brother, we got to talk with them, speak a little bit of Hebrew. I always like to talk to those that can speak some Hebrew because once you engulf yourself in that, it kind of brings it out of you. <laughs> and uh, I'm not saying I, I know much, but just a little bit that I know. And so we got to talk. And he said, how would you like to take a tour? Yeah. Brother, he did. We went to the artery of the ship. We've seen how the food was prepared or in pallets down there where they receive it, the kitchens, the et ceteras, everywhere else, brother. Uh, they, they, had, they had the jail. Oh, yeah, he had a jail. <laughs> we even took pictures in the jail. Maybe I should have been locked up, but I've seen the jail. Amen. And uh, they had a morgue. Oh, yeah, just in case somebody had too much cheesecake. And brother, they even had an incinerary where they burnt all the garbage because you can't cast it over shore. You'd have a thousand sharks following you. Look at those pretty fish. <laughs> and the, the, the incinerary where they burnt garbage, put rowdy teenagers into. Not really. Don't, don't look at me in that tone of voice. Hallelujah. <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, then he brought his brother. As a matter of fact, about seven or eight of us went to his cabin and he showed us. And he grabbed a guitar and, yeah, here. <laughs> you, oh! He's a messianic Jew is what he was. He, he, he believed Jesus is the Messiah. I'm not saying he's Acts 2.38. But that was still cool in that sense because we can help him. And somebody say, yeah. We started singing some of the songs that he sang in his kibbutz or his messianic congregation. He fed us some Israeli sweet food. <laughs> Lead me to the vine. <laughs> well, I mean, how many know what I'm saying? Just good stuff. I mean, but then he brought us to the command control. Wow. 
all the needles and tech and LED and uh, electronics and the big turbine turbines that were turning, how they got it going. Brother, I'm talking Royal Caribbean, cutting through the sea. Wow, they're navigating, they're GPSing, they're looking out for pirate ships. I'm not talking patch and hook. I'm talking modern ships. Hey man, these they're looking for everything. And they're ready. while we're just having a time up above, you don't know what's going on below. <laughs> hey man, I, I remember one of the cru- cruisers, brother, we slowed way down. It's because, well, something happened to the controls of one of the engines or two. <laughs> right. Someone else was telling me, <laughs> no, there's probably slowing down because there's danger somewhere out there. I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm ruining your trip. I did. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Some of you are facing the danger. We're going to do it anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got hair on my elbow. Yeah. What, what are you saying, preacher? We went down there and we seen all this, brother. They, that now they have all these gadgets and navigation. They didn't have that before. I'm trying to hasten. Is this okay? Help me, somebody. Yeah. Amen, brother. And all of a sudden, Amen. The, the ship's position back then, the night sky offered these reference points in the form of stars and celestial patterns. The navigator would study the stars and with a few simple calculations determine the approximate longitude and latitude of the ship. But the night sky offered no visible horizon toward which the ship could be directed. It had its position, but no direction. For the proper horizon to be found, the navigator needed the light of day, which with its arrival would wash away the visibility of the stars. It was only one moment in time at the break of the day when the sun was rising that you could still see the stars And just make out the horizon. The sailor, the navigator called it the nautical hour. It had one hour where it could, through the star, I know my position. Amen. Big Dipper, Little Dipper, North Star. I know where we are. But yet they could see the horizon just enough to where they could know their position And their direction all at the same time. And they had one hour to conclude that navigation before the stars would wash away. Saints, this is what I feel for the church of the living God. In a day of danger, electronic, artificial intelligence danger, mark of the beast danger. Amen. The danger of the looming presence of the battle of Armageddon and the danger of a world that wants to succumb and overtake every bit of Christianity and throw it on the back door of history. We have one hour to work. And the only way that we can do that is to somehow get up on a wall somewhere in the tower and get a hold of the spirit of a watchman that looks deep into the night and says, yes, that is a him has. David, tell the king, tell the king, amen, the identity of what's going on. Yes, that is Jehu riding furiously. I can make it out in the night. It's the lady, amen, with position that dropped the part of the millstone directly on the head of the man who was trying to take down the tower and found him dead. Somebody here in me, hallelujah. Benehazai, man that seen the lion in the pit, but he could see afar off and said, if I don't get it in the pit because of the snow, it'll get out and get somebody. I must go down in the pit. Why? Because he could see something in the future. We need a pinnacle position with a perfect longitude, latitude, direction. Look at your neighbor say, this is your nautical hour. What are you going to do with it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I, I don't have all the time, amen, to get to it right now. But there is, there is, amen, a particular torture that you could find within the realms of Chinese torture. This particular man, amen, begin to study on how, how societies choose to fail or succeed. We are in our nautical hour in America. And I'm not here to... Politically bantered today, maybe preaching about the wall, we ought to send this to our senators. 
I believe we need a wall. That went over like a flock of dogs. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can say that from experience. I am an immigrant. I'm a third generation or so immigrant. My parents, amen, my great-grandpas, grandmas, I believe a good majority of them came to Ellis Island from Germany and Poland. Amen, they came and did it right. They moved to North Dakota, which was reminiscent, Wisconsin, North Dakota, which was reminiscent of the land that they came from in Germany. And I've been to Germany. I know it's reminiscent. When I'm in Germany, I almost feel like I'm at home, past the sauerkraut. What are you saying, preacher? Amen. It's got to be done right in the night. There's got to be a watchman on the wall. There's got to be something that takes place. (laughs) Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) How societies fall, fail, or succeed. Amen, brother. He said there is a creeping normality. Somebody say creeping normality. Look at your name. Creeping normality. Lin Chi was a Chinese form of torture during which the torturer inflicted the victim with a thousand cuts, each seemingly insignificant. The pain of every new cut rendered the previous one painless. But slowly the victim would be conditioned to accept his death as a welcome change from a thousand cuts. Death by a thousand cuts. These cuts, some more painful than others, but each contributing to the cumulative, cumulative, Cumulative damage fuel a creeping normality in which yesterday's unthinkable become tomorrow's norm. It won't matter, brother. It's just a piece of tissue. It's just an embryo somewhere. It's going to be okay. Cut! (laughs) None of us should have ever accepted the first cut. That hurts. That's wrong. But society has accepted it, not this church. And we begin to incrementally desensitize. Second cut. How about just before it comes out of the womb? Unthinkable. But some are accepting it. Cut. You forgot this one and this one and this one. Please, not another. Boom. How about outside of the wall? Into the side. Ah, yeah, unthinkable, but who's going to let it happen? Death by a thousand cuts. When things happen in our lives to where the watchman falls asleep, no more heed, no more haste, no more lion to call Babylon. Babylon, I think, is, I don't even know if Babylon's fallen. Cut. (laughs) Political changes. (laughs) Three people die from terrorists. Can't let it happen. Then a hundred. Oh well. Then three thousand. Nine eleven. We don't need a wall. One cut at a time, incrementally. Amen. Ling Chi. To where, brother, we're begging to die because of the cumulative, creeping normality. It's just Google. It's just a guy with a thousand colors in his hair. The 56 earrings in his left earlobe. It doesn't matter. I'll just stay on my side. You stay on your side. Hello, somebody. Watchman. Watchman. Call it out. Let your preacher call it out. Brother, I've pastored for seven and a half years before over two years now. Been in the full-time field as an international evangelist. And I'm here to tell you today, amen, that if there's one thing I aspire to do, is just make it easy on the man of God as possible. I'm tired of sucking on pacifiers. I don't, want you, I don't want you changing my diaper, brother. I can do that myself. Hello, somebody. One blow at a time. Sometimes in our marriage, and I thank God for the best lady on this side of heaven. But I want to say sometimes, I mean, I got to tell her, hey, I'm not going to do that anymore. I think God's dealing with me about something. 
as a leader of my home, hey man, I've got to recognize this has got to change. I can't do this no more. Sorry if I wounded you. Sorry if I was a little lapse in my thinking or sensitivity. Hello, somebody. One cut at a time, creeping normality. One picture won't matter. One hemline over here. One this, one holiness, one this. Whatever happened to the watchman in the middle of the night? Hello, somebody. Can I conclude? Can I hasten? Brother, I don't know how long I've been preaching. I don't see a clock. <laughs> and that's by pastor's de design, I'm sure. But let me, let, me, let me just explain it this way. Let me just say it this way. I, I had this opportunity, and I, I'm the Holy John. I humbly thank God for it, brother. Hey, man, my son and a couple of other brothers, uh, actually there's four total that were going to Greece and Rome. And uh, they, they we're just going to go. And I thought, well, that's, that's cool. Good, good job, Brother Micah. That's awesome. And, and, and man, take that. As a matter of fact, I've been wanting to go there for a long time. You know, just Paul's travels, New Testament, etc. And uh, wow, that's great. Because we're, we're focused on Israel, etc. And, and, uh, uh, and, and, but one of the young men got in the family way, him and his wife, and they couldn't go financially. And so one was dropped out. And Micah said, Dad, would you like to go? Hey, you don't have to ask me twice. Amen. So we jumped on this opportunity, brother, and in September, we went to Rome and Greece, and we went to Philippi and Corinth, uh, amen, where the Corinthians, the, the letters were written. I've never read Corinthians like I've read it like now, <laughs> amen, and, and Thessaloniki, Thessalonica, we found the, we found the, 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 the archives, brother, the, the, the archaeological uh, ruins, and just awesome. I remember sitting in Corinth, amen, just, just on the slab somewhere where there was a broken chapter and pillar and just wasted, but it was one of the most, uh, it, it was what they would call a Roman Rome duplicate city. So they built it as if it was Rome itself. And there's other cities like that. And, and so I could see it. I could see some of the shops that they reconstructed. There were uh, people like Aquila and Priscilla of the Book of Acts had a shop. And just beyond that on the hill was the, uh, the, the, the Akron or you would call the Apollo Temple that they reconstructed a little bit. And I could see them both, Aquila, Priscilla, and then Apollo. You talk about contrast. You talk, about, you talk about cultural conflict. It was just awesome. And if they can do it, we can do it. And I got, brother, it just got a hold of me. You know what we called it? Hashtag, amen, New Testament study tour. <laughs> I don't care if they're calling it that. I'm calling it that. And, and we got to study. We went to Rome. Rome, brother, it's just so awesome. And we went to the, 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 the Vatican, and we walked around in there, see that, and, and, and touched some toes and of the, of the uh, statues and different things and looked at some stuff. And, and uh, I used to be Catholic, so this was my past, past roots. This is what I was part of. So I could relate in the sense, uh, we won't go into that. I used to go into the confessional booth and tell the priests my sins. Sometimes as an 11-year-old kid, I didn't have enough sins, I thought, so I made some up. I lied in the confessional book. <laughs> we won't go there, praise God. <laughs> no more lying in the Pentecostal church, hallelujah. <laughs> Man, hallelujah. <laughs> what are you saying, preacher? But this is one thing, I'm, I'm going to hasten, I'm trying to close, I'm trying. Is this okay? McDonald's will still be open, or... Haciendas or whatever you call it. Amen. Hear, hear this. We went to the Colosseum. In the Colosseum. How many, how many, how many ever been there? Maybe some of you have. Wow. Some of you have been to the Colosseum. Just awesome. Beautiful. Brother, with all of its little windows. And see, see, and if I'm getting this right, just outside the Colosseum used to be a 90-foot Apollo or a god of the light. Tall statue. You can still see kind of the pedestal area where it was, or at least the area was called Colossus. It was a Colossus. That's why thus Colosseum. The Colosseum could fit somewhere around 70,000 people. Romans. 70,000. And the tour guide, he convinced us, you want to take the night tour? Night tour. Did y'all go on the night tour? Next time. Amen. <laughs> the night tour. I thought, well, wow, wow, okay. This is pretty cool. There it was. It was I'd like to take the day tour sometime, but the night tour, I mean, we, we walked in, and in those windows were lights everywhere, just whoo, 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 lit up like that. It was just mind-boggling. And we went in, and finally, I'm just going to cut it to the chase here. We went, and we seen the, the ripped open floor by time's decay. 
And you could see where the gladiators and the lions and the slaves and the Christians and everybody else was staged to come up to the main floor. It had an eerie feeling, and I don't know if you all felt that, but just an eerie feeling in the night. It's like, wow, 70,000. <sighs> everybody around. And we, we took this tour, brother, and he got, they, they finally brought us down to the bottom floor where all these compartments, and they brought us to a, 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 a remade, duplicate kind of thing of a trap door the hydraulics of yesterday, how that there would be one gladiator ready here and another gladiator ready here, and they were like waxmen ready and poised to go. And then they would lift up this little platform like a trap door in the middle of all the 70,000. And they would clap, and then they would begin. They even had in the main floor before, from what I understand, brother, there was a, a Roman kind of ship that sailed on the Mediterranean to display a replica. And, and a barbarian ship over here with its oars. And, poof, 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 and they would, as if it were coming against and ramming each other. Amen. There was water on the stage. I don't know how they did it. Water and sand, or at least in part. Amen. Then they would climb over the boats. And, amen. Bloodletting, real bloodletting. And swords. <laughs> fire. Just a battle would take place in the middle of this arena. Christians would die singing as hungry lions took them down. Slaves who were destined to politically die in their justice system would be unarmed against the gladiator who was bloodletting. Rome didn't die from the outside inside out incrementally one cut at a time I don't think they've ever intended it to be is it in, ended up to be one of the tour guides said this is the Hollywood of yesterday incrementally engulfing and capturing your vision, distractions, Facebook analogies, and I'm not preaching against the whole, but Facebook stuff that becomes platforms for idiotic thinking that we begin to fuss and confuse over that take our attention away from the watchtower in the slight of the night. Is somebody hearing me right now? Is somebody, fourth principle, I've got to embrace the spirit. I'm the watchman of the night. My kids are worth it. My son's getting married, amen, this coming April. And by faith, that means grandkids are coming. That means I'm praying for them in advance. Things are happening, unfolding in our lives. And I want to be double ready in my spirit to avenge, rise, and kill first. My daughters are at the door of doing the same. Things are happening, and I feel so responsible. I've got to be ready as the watchman in the night. Could somebody stand, lift their hands? Amen. Could you begin to talk to Jesus with an urgency? <laughs> cut! Cut! Start now, brother. Start now. Start now, sister. Come on. Recognize the creeping normality. Recognizing the fad and the fashions and the centerfold pages. Amen. Of the California magazines. That want to influence who you are. The spirit of the watchman in this house. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost beckons for a voice to be lifted. The Holy Ghost is listening for somebody who will speak. The Holy Ghost is ready to assist somebody who will say, Fill me. There's a lion in the way. There's camels. Amen. There's asses. There's donkeys. There's there's things coming down the road. Babylon has fallen, I can tell it. Jay Hughes in the distance. 
I am a house. He's the one, David, that's bringing the message. Is there anybody that's got ears to hear and eyes to see? Son, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you want to. I don't know if you understand. And I, 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 brother, I'm not saying that everybody can make it to the top of this altar, but maybe there's just a few that can make it to the top of these steps that can look out, amen, and say, I see it in the distance. Watchmen! There'll always be a devil out there. Don't underestimate it. Flesh may fail. I'm going to trust in God. And I always need the house of God to help me in my journey. I need the preached word. But more than ever before. Amen. I could say, brother, you're the watchman. But I'm not preaching about your pastor. I'm preaching about how everybody in this house needs to be a personal watchman on your personal wall. Come on. This altar ought to have been full already. These steps ought to have been full with young men that are looking out. Could you join me? Is there a young man that can climb these steps with me? Is there a young man that can come on? Come on. Hear my cry. Hear my prayer. The church, church. The church, church. Come on, son. Help me. Help me out up here. Help me out up here. Come on. Help me out up here. Help me out up here. Come on. Look ahead. We need young men that got vision. We need young men. Hallelujah. That in this hour. Come on. That's it. In the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, brother. That's it, Elder. Come on. Brother, you've been hearing it in the night. God has been dealing with your heart about things that he just wants you to see. Amen. Go ahead. That's the voice of God. Amen. It might be a little uncomfortable. You might even think, God, that seems a little strange. But your pastor's behind you. And if he's behind you, you take that step. If God is in the picture, you take the step. That's it, pastor. That's it. Come on, young man. There's a laser vision. Somebody anoint your shield. Somebody anoint your shield. Come on. Higher praise. Let's go higher. Higher praise. Come on. Get the fourth principle, young man. Leave this house. With the spirit of our Thank God for ladies with dignity. Thank God for sisters with stature. Thank you. That's it. Come on. Rise and kill first. Come on. God, there's a terrorist. A spiritual terrorist in the angels of the church. I need a watchman in the night. I need a watchman in the night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's Holy Ghost impartation. There's Holy Ghost impartation. Come on. That's it, son. You're going to turn this church upside down. You're going to turn turn this community. Come on. Hallelujah. Covington, look out. Here come the Pentecostals. There's watchmen in the night. There's watchmen in the night. This is your nautical hour. This is your nautical hour. Come on, church. You may not have tomorrow. This is your nautical hour, sir. This is your nautical hour, ma'am. That's it. Come on, church. Come on, higher praise. I don't care who's coming to the church. I don't care who's going from the church. This is the church. This is the hour. And I'm going to put my heart to the wheel. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to give everything I've got in the name of Jesus. Devil, you can't. 
have my future. Shadakabasha, I'm a watchman. I see it in the night. I preempt. I do something about it now. My conviction has gone before me. Yes. You're not upon our pray. We've got time for this pray. What if God would have us pray another 20 minutes? That's it. Some of you might want to fall flat on the floor. Some of you pressing up against the wall. Some of you, that's it, hanging on a pillar somewhere. Go ahead. Yes. If you need the Holy Ghost, God's here to fill you. Yes, 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 yes. Somebody need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Come on. This is your nautical hour to make your calling and election sure. Don't stand by on the sidelines. Go ahead. you in it but for every Hebrew letter and you know this there is a picture from the past that it derived from it morphed into its modern form because of a pictorial such as Chinese etc and the name of God is YHWH how many remember that we would say Yahweh a better rendition maybe Yahovah 
but whatever, it's Y-H-W-H. And in Hebrew, that would be yud he vav he. Yud is a letter he, then vav, and then he again. Yud is a picture of a hand. He is someone that's jumping up and down and going, behold or look. Vav is a spike or a nail. And then there's he again. Look. Hand look, nail look. The name of God. Hand. Look. Nail. Look. His name is Calvary. His name is redemption. His name said, I had you in mind. Who for the joy that looked before endured the cross and despised the shame. They say, brother, and it makes sense, that Jesus, when he was crucified, was crucified at three in the afternoon. The impeccable timing of the Passover lamb in the temple precinct was slain kosherly at three in the afternoon Jesus would have been slain at the same time the Passover lamb was slain it is finished Greek to tell us die paid in full they say that upon that tree the darkness the thunder the lightning commentary say brother that it was dark enough to where the sky begin to show the stars at night in so much for the, the, the chronology of what was going on and the timing that Jesus was crucified, that the constellation representing a dragon was behind the cross or behind Jesus. It was as if Jesus was on the cross saying, Satan, get thee behind me. But yet it was light enough to see the horizon in the distance. The one that knew the nautical hour in the impeccable timing. The one that was the watchman and had the spirit of the watchman for eternity. For you and I saw was Jesus Christ hanging on a tree. I want the spirit of the watchman, the spirit of the cross. Psalm 23, Psalm 22, Psalm 24. Psalm 22 depicts the cross. They stare at me, the nails. Psalm 23 depicts the shepherd and the sheep with the crook. Psalm 24 depicts the crown. Lift up your gates, lift up your heads, O oh, your gates, for the king of glory. 22, cross. 23, crook. 24, crown. We want the crown, but we've got to have the cross and the discipleship crook before we can have a crown. How many want the cross? I want the spirit of the watchman to rub off on me today. Could somebody lift their hands and thank the Lord? Come on, come on. Hand, look, nail, look. Could you speak to him? Could you talk to him? That's it. Come on, that's it. I'm going to carry my cross out of here. I'm going to live for Jesus with all my heart. Hallelujah. I've got the spirit of a watchman today. you've never heard today hallelujah amen have you enjoyed what you've heard in the house of god today hallelujah amen 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 brother narlock is amen he is just full with wisdom and knowledge and
things that we don't ever think about. Hallelujah. But we certainly are grateful that he's come our way to share, amen, his knowledge of, amen, that area and what all, all their travels and all that they've learned and all that they've been taught, praise God, about, amen, what they've seen, seen and faced in Israel and those other travels that they've been on, praise God. We may not ever get to travel that same route that he has, but we can learn what he's learned. Amen. Or we can learn what he shared with us. Praise God. I want you to come back Wednesday night, if at all possible. Brother Narlock will be preaching. Then Friday night and Saturday is our wedding seminar. Every couple in the church wants you to come. Don't let the $100 that we're asking for, if you don't have that $100, don't let that keep you from coming. Come on anyway. Amen. We will we will take care of the food and everything for that night. Praise God. If there's a shortage of money that comes in, amen. We want you to come. Amen. So don't use the money for an excuse not to come. Hallelujah. And then next Sunday, Brother Narlock will be uh, here with us again. Let's give the Lord a great big hand clap of appreciation for what we've heard here today. God bless you. Shake hands with one another. Make sure you let this preacher know, amen, how much you enjoy what he shared with you today and us today. Amen. Hallelujah. I want, I want the spirit of a watchman. How about you? Amen. I want the spirit of the watchman. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. You're dismissed this morning. In Jesus' name.